Yo yo, welcome to lesson 28. Today, we are going to learn how to use GitHub. Have you ever wondered why a big company like Google has over thousands of employees and how do they all work together? Well, the answer is simple. They use a version control tool like Git, which allows them to collaborate with each other. Before we talk about Git or GitHub, let me tell you a quick story to help you understand how all of this works. Let's pretend that we're playing a game like Pokemon, and currently we have three Pokemons, Mewtwo, Dragonite, and Snorlax. And now let's draw a line to represent the timeline of our game, where basically this point represents our current save state. And down the path, we have to make a critical decision, where we have to choose between one of the three Pokemons, Squirtle, Charmander, or Bulbasaur. So before we choose the Pokemon, we want to test each one out, so that way we make an informed decision. So basically what we can do is we can create three new save states based off of save state one. So now we have four save states, save one, save Squirtle, save Charmander, and save Bulbasaur. And for each of these save states, we can continue to play this game, save the game, and eventually branch off again. So we can do this for each save file. But in the end, the main game save file is the one that we care about the most because the save file represents our profile that can be shared online. So after trying each Pokemon, we have to make up our minds and pick one of them. Comment below what Pokemon that you would choose. So in the end, my favorite is Charmander. So what I'll do is I'll take the branch with Charmander and merge it into the main game timeline. So now we will have save state 2 where our team will include Charmander. So how this relates back to Git is that we have a timeline which represents the code for our project. And let's pretend we're building a simple website where basically save state 1 is just the skeleton of the HTML. Then in save state 2, we change the background color to blue. You can think of the three Pokemons as three other teammates trying to work on the same code base, but basically each teammate will create their own branch off of the main timeline. So that way they can work on their own changes in an isolated environment. And once their changes are complete, they can merge it back into the main timeline. The purpose of the branches is to prevent people from stepping on each other's toes. Another way of thinking about this is a group project. You probably want to communicate with your team members so that way you guys don't duplicate work. Once each person completes their part of the project, everyone's work will be merged together, so that way it can be submitted to be marked by the teacher. And the cool thing about Git is that we have a history of all of our changes. In this example, we have five different states, and currently our project is in state five. And if we want, we can always hop back to different states. This is super helpful because if for some reason, someone merges a change that breaks the website, we can always just roll back to a previous state that is more stable. So one important thing to note is that when you work on a project, you want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date files. For example, let's pretend Charmander is trying to work on a feature and he is currently on state four. So basically he branches off this state and this is how the website currently looks. He then proceeds to add a picture of himself to the website. Now he wants to merge his changes to the main project timeline. However, because his current state is outdated, he will get something called a merge conflict. The reason for this is because the main project timeline looks like this while his current state looks like this. So unless if he wants to override the main project with his changes, then he would have to force his changes on top of the main timeline. However, that is bad practice and people should avoid this as much as possible. You can think of this like a safety measure in a game where it double checks whether you actually want to override your save game. And this has happened to me in the past where I overrode my save game by accident. So this prompt is super helpful. So what Charmander can do instead is he can do something called a rebase where basically his branch will get the latest changes from the main timeline. And then all he has to do is apply his changes on top of the latest state. So now his changes will include the stuff from the main project, and that way when he merges, it won't be deleting a previous state. So now Charmander can merge his branch onto the main timeline. And now we will get a save state 6 with Charmander's changes. And this is also why games like League of Legends force you to patch your game whenever there's an update. This ensures that everyone is on the same patch and that way no one is in an outdated state. If this doesn't make sense, don't worry, we will cover this in a future video. Awesome, and that's basically Git aka version control in a nutshell. Cool, now let's talk about GitHub. GitHub is basically a place where we can host our projects on the cloud and also collaborate with other people. The first thing we want to do is click sign up and look at this cool animation. So enter your email, hit continue, create a password and hit continue, enter a username and try to keep this unique because GitHub acts as your portfolio, which you can share with friends and also recruiters to help you find a job. Oh man, someone took my username. I'll just add a one to the end and click continue. Uh, I'll just put no for this and hit continue. So it looks like we have to solve a puzzle, start puzzle, uh, pick the spiral galaxy. Uh, this is hard, I don't know, maybe this one, um, this one. Okay, cool, looks like I passed. And now you can create your account. So now check your email, which should give you the code to authenticate your account. 
Nice. Cool, now let's answer the prompts. So just put just me and you're a student and continue. For now, just put collaborative coding and click continue. And I think the free plan is good enough for our use cases for now. So let's continue for free. Cool, now you have a GitHub account, so that way you can build up your portfolio and share it with recruiters. And you can also put this on your resume. First, let's introduce ourselves by clicking continue here. This basically creates a readme file for your account. And a readme file is basically a file that describes the project. But in this case, this is a special file just for your account. So that way it displays on the front page of your account. And a readme is basically a markdown file, which is basically MD. And markdown files are usually just text files that has some kind of styling similar to HTML. So let's click preview. And here we can see what our markdown code will look like. So go back to edit and then scroll down. And here it says commit new file. And what you want to do is provide a descriptive title to explain what these changes are about. So in this case, I'll just write add introduction. So that way, when we look back at the timeline, we know exactly what this change does. Cool. Now click commit new file. And now we have basically created our introduction. So if you look here, you'll see this clock icon that says one commit. So click this and basically here, you'll see the timeline of all the changes that you have made for this project. So far, we've only made one change, add introduction. And basically you can click on this and here in green, you can see all the changes that we have made, which is pretty cool. Now let's go back to our profile, click code with Vincent one. And here, as you can see, we can see our introduction. Cool. And then click repositories. And here we have one repository and you can basically think of a repository as a folder that contains the files for a specific project. So let's click on code with Vincent one. And this repository basically contains the file that has the introduction for our page. And the cool thing with GitHub is you can click this edit button and here you can update the code directly. And now let's update our readme. I'm interested in coding. I'm currently learning how to code. I'm looking to collaborate on code and how to reach me discord. Cool. Now scroll down and now let's add another message. So let's do update introduction. And here in the bottom, you're going to see commit directly to main. And if you select this option, it will merge your changes directly into the main timeline. This is good for solo projects because you don't have to worry about other people, but when you're working on a team, you want to create a new branch for this commit. So this goes back to the initial example where we created a branch off the main timeline, and then we basically made our changes and then we merged it back into the timeline. Cool. And you can also name this branch in general. I just put my name Vincent and then I add a dash. And then I describe what kind of work I'll be doing on this branch. In this case, I'll just put introduction because I'm updating the introduction. Cool. And now click propose changes. And now you'll see a screen that says open a pull request. And inside this text box, you can leave a descriptive message of what exactly you're doing. So here I can just say add data for questions. And then if you scroll down, you're going to see your changes. You're going to see red and also green, where basically red is deleting a line and green is adding a new line. So in this case, the first line didn't get any changes. So that's why it's not green or red for line two. We basically changed the line and we added coding here. So as you can see, this tool is showing you the changes that you made. And you can see this more clearly if you click split. And now you can see a side by side comparison of the changes that you have made. So in this case, I changed coding, how to code, code and discord, where I basically just replaced these three dots for each of these lines. Cool. If these changes look good, just click create pull request. And now basically what happens is we have a pull request where basically if you're working in a team setting, people can look at this pull request, they can click file change. And in here they see what you change. And as a highlight on a line, you can see this plus sign. So on line five, let's click the plus sign. And here I can leave a comment. So I can say, please be more specific because in this case, I'm not telling you guys how you can reach me on discord. And then I can click add single comment and then I can click review changes. And here I can leave a comment. So I'll just say, please address the comments and then click submit review. And now if you look at the pull request, you'll see this comment here. And basically now it's up to the author of the pull request to make these changes. And that's basically how engineers collaborate with each other. They would create a pull request and then someone will review the code. And if the code is good, someone will approve the code. And then after that, you can click merge pull request and then click confirm merge. And now that is merged, scroll up and click your project. And here, as you can see, we got the new changes. And if you go to the timeline, you're going to see add introduction, update introduction and merge pull requests. And just like that, you have a history of all the changes on your project. Cool. So I created this sample website so that way you guys can practice Git and contribute to this project. So basically all you have to do is add a row answering these questions to this table. So the repository is here. It's called GitHub 101. I'll leave a link in the description. All you have to do is click index.html, click the pencil tool, uh, scroll down and inside the T body tag, hit enter and add your own row that answers the questions in the header. Once you're done, scroll down, add a meaningful title and click propose changes. Next, scroll down, make sure everything looks good. 
click create pull request and copy this link, open Discord and go to Vincent's Bootcamp Lesson 20 Web Development. Drop the link here and hit enter. And then I can view your pull request. Then I can review your code. If everything looks good, I'll click review and approve and submit review. And then on your end, you're going to see that there's one approval. But unfortunately on GitHub, I can't give everyone right access. If someone knows how to fix this, please let me know. But anyways, for now, I can merge your pull request. So I'll click merge and then I'll click confirm merge and boom. Now your changes are merged to the main timeline. Now, if we go back to the project and we go to commits, you're going to see that the changes were merged. Let's go back and then click index.html, scroll down and here you'll see the changes. Cool. And just like that, your changes are on the website. And just a quick note before we end this video, since we're all working on the same file, there will be chances where we will step on each other's toes, where basically we'll get a merge conflict. And it will look something like this. And we can resolve it very simply by clicking resolve conflicts. This will open an editor. And if you scroll down and at the bottom, you'll see this red line, which means that these lines are conflicting with each other. So everything else in the file is good, except for these lines. All we want to do is figure out which lines we want to keep and which lines we want to remove. So look carefully at the code and try not to delete someone else's code. An easy way to fix this is to copy your changes and save it somewhere else. Uh, scroll up, click GitHub 101, go to this tab and go to the index.html, click raw and copy all of this code. Go back to the initial tab and replace all the code here with the code we copied. And now basically our code will be up to date with the main timeline. And then all you have to do is copy your code from before and paste it underneath. And then if this looks good, all you have to do is scroll up and click mark as resolved and click commit merge and then go back to files change. And now just double check that these changes make sense and it's not deleting someone else's code. Cool, I hope you learned something new today. In the next lesson, we're gonna learn how to create our own repository, and then we're gonna learn how to host our own website. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video, drop a comment below, and also subscribe so that way you won't miss out on the next lesson.